Final exam time, final regular season match for both Northwestern and Penn State for the Wildcats. It's welcome to enemy territory, Penn State campus, and what a way to wrap up the regular season with two of the top teams colliding this afternoon. We look at the Big Ten Conference field hockey standings. Northwestern tied with Maryland atop. And remember that Northwestern beat Maryland back on September 20th, so they would win a potential tiebreaker. Northwestern, they win today. They at least get a share of the regular season title. Also, very important for Penn State as they jockey for Big Ten tournament position. Always great to be next to the former Michigan Wolverine, Captain Kara Lentz. I'm Dan Kelly. Welcome into another Field Hockey Friday. And the race to the finish line, still some unfinished business. Both teams important match for different reasons. Absolutely, and I think it's important, just going back to last season, that Northwestern carries out the remainder of their season. They have their destiny in control. How they perform today will have a huge dictation on how they will continue to go throughout the tournament. Well, Isabel Flens dictates a lot of things going forward for the Northwestern Wildcats, and Coach says she's got that vision. One thing about this player that is absolutely instrumental is her game sense. This is only a sophomore, and she has the capability to go from the midfield and occasionally switch up to the forward line. Extremely versatile, and her IQ for field hockey is so important. And talking about IQ, you can never overlook Laura Gephardt, who has been a mainstay for the Penn State Nittany line since her freshman year. She is on the current U.S. national team, one of three players in the nation that are still in college competing for the U.S. How she runs in that high center mid is such a big part of Penn State's game. Chillier conditions in Big Ten country, but for the most part, things holding here in Pennsylvania. 46 degrees, humidity just above 60%. Wind really shouldn't be a factor and hopefully no rain this afternoon as we gear up for number five, Penn State versus number eight, Northwestern. And let's meet those Wildcats led by Lisa McCarthy. A junior captain on this team, extremely vocal coming out of the backfield, has a lot of experience on the turf. She really runs how Northwestern forms her mids and backs. Penn State disappointed with the results shut out for nothing by Iowa. They look for redemption this afternoon. Amanda Denunzio has done an excellent job this season with a with breaking out in her play. She set, sets up her teammates very well, extremely good with assisting, passing, and finding streams. So just underway, Isabel Flens. The Northwestern Wildcats have it for a moment, but it's Penn State. It's the Nittany Lions in blue on their home field. You hear that orchestra behind. Third best attendance nationally here at Penn State behind just Michigan and Maryland. I think that says so much about the conference this year, Dan, with nine teams in the Big Ten Conference, and you look at the, the amount of people that are coming out to witness that. Michigan, brand new stadium, hosting the Big Ten Tournament. A lot of eyes are turning to the sport in the Midwest. Continues to swell with popularity is Penn State looking for the early advantage. The experienced Natalie Buttinger. She comes from a field hockey family. Her sister plays at Duke. She wears number 19 for the blue and white. And for Penn State, we mentioned that loss to Iowa, a captain's meeting practice in this week. And the practice, as a result, the tone was very intense, said head coach Shar Moret Curtis. Is her Nittany Lions here looking for their first chance. Jenna Krismer operates. Gebhardt was thwarted there. Gebhardt, one of the captains who initiated that team meeting, that team conference. And at this point in the season, you turn on a new level, a new type of intensity. Penn State must come out in this game hot. They have to come out sharp after getting shut out by Iowa. So first penalty corner of this match goes to Penn State. They've been averaging over eight a game, but only seven conversions on 137 corners for this Nittany Lion team. 
that certainly is a percentage that Shar Moret Curtis would like to see increase. Go. Getting the shot on target has been the biggest challenge. It's Maddie Carpenter watching things, keeping safe for Northwestern. Penn State has spent a lot of the opening minutes down on the side of the field. Maddie Carpenter has been one of the main saves for Northwestern in the backfield in the goal cage. It's the experienced Shar Marek Curtis must like the start so far from her team. It's Kylie Lakata in goal for Penn State. We just saw Maddie Carpenter as Kara Lentz touched upon. She's got a save percentage, close to 80% in conference play. A goals against average just over one. She'll have to be big this afternoon. Six and one record in Big Ten play for the Wildcats wearing white today for Penn State. Four and three record as they look for the opening goal going down to ground there was Laura Gebhardt. During this game, throughout this game, take notice to how number five positions herself on the field off ball. She always seems to be in a good position. She opens up space for her teammates. Make note of number five in the midfield. Here's Kelly Stump, ventures into the circle. Reverse chip, booted away by Lakata. One difference I've seen in Northwestern's offense and attack this year is just how aggressive they are once they're inside the circle. You look at some players on the forward line, you have Dom Masters, number three, number four, Kelly Stump, and Caroline Tronsaliti, number one for Northwestern. When they're inside the circle, these are quick players. They're getting one or two touches on the ball, then they're looking to net. Katie Brenneman, number 14, a big presence out of the back for Penn State is Northwestern. Their first stroll forward of this match. So we'll stay with Sophia Miller and the Wildcats. Shar Martin ventures in for a closer look, taking it to the line. Her 13 assists for Shar Martin led her team last year. This is Kelsey Thompson. Little possession here now from the Wildcats. Brenneman right out there defensively. 59th game for Katie Brenneman. Her experience brings a lot of confidence here on the turnover. It's Kelsey Thompson settling things down. This is going to be a great matchup to watch as well in the midfield between number 11, Kelsey Thompson, and number 5, Laura Gebhardt. Kelsey Thompson has a lot of length on her block tackle, and as a defender, that is very hard to beat. It's not you just pull once and you get around. You have to double pull. You have to pull back. Kelsey Thompson is certainly a very disciplined defender. Because of that reach, do coaches like Tracy Fuchs and Char Moret Curtis, do they like that length and size a lot more from the defender? Absolutely, and I think another part of that type of player that is instrumental is if they do come up with a turnover, they have an ability to accelerate, beat that person in one or two steps and become more offensive. Have a plan and know how to execute it. It's here just under 29 minutes to go in the opening half. Maybe this is finally the season for Northwestern to really break through as they search for this opening goal. Tronsaliti there on the end of that. The advancement of Caroline Tronsaliti since her freshman year has been very impressive to watch. I don't think she would have been able to trap that ball along the end line one or two years ago. I think that's a player that has really worked on her individual skill. Northwestern, they had a share of the Big Ten title last year with Penn State, but they'd like the whole darn thing themselves this year. Yeah, they want to play in the NCAA tournament. I mean, that's definitely been a huge highlight and focus for this team the previous two years when they did well during the season and they get knocked out in the first round of the Big Ten tournament and lose their hopes of playing for the national championship. This team wants that. 
Tracy Fuchs also said this is the most balanced team that she's ever coached, and that goes a long way when you're talking about single elimination tournaments. 15 and five record last year, not selected for the tournament is Penn State. They started this match so strong. Great passing inside, outside, give and go. And it's Taylor Harold, their leading goal scorer. Couldn't get the shot through there. Lisa McCarthy coming back. Taylor Harold, once she's inside the circle, she has a great ability to find space behind the defender. Once she's inside, she's winding up. If you want an idea of how tough Lisa McCarthy is, number eight in the backfield for Northwestern, charging out to a player like that when she's winding up. That's tough. Reckless. Second penalty corner try here for Penn State. Ejected by Eric. Side of the goal. Eric. Foot save by Maddie Carpenter. And Penn State comes so close. Wow, talk about knocking on the door, knocking right on the post as well. Ma Maddie Carpenter was able to stay in this play. That was a great tip by Jenna Krismer right in front, and Maddie Carpenter just taking away a lot of space in that net. Some good defense. So now on the counter. Quickly turned over by Northwestern. Starting to ease their way into this match now, the Nittany Lions. It's Gebhardt just missing the connection in, at midfield. And that's why Tracy Fuchs is saying that a good goalkeeper, it's a lot like pitching in baseball. And we see the importance there from Maddie Carpenter and a little help from the goalpost to keep this a scoreless game. Next to Kara Lentz, I'm Dan Kelly, our BTN crew. Great to have you with us this afternoon from University Park, Pennsylvania. Next week is the Big Ten Tournament, beginning on BTN with semifinal coverage next Friday. Quarterfinals launch from Ann Arbor next Thursday. Good anticipation. The midfield by Penn State, but they get a little sloppy with it. Char Martin checks her options. Looked like be a good one there on the outside, but just off target. We expect a rather low scoring match, but Northwestern has generated 14 goals in their last four games. Here's Penn State. Looking for the opening strike. There's Gebhardt, number five, one of the most dominant players in the entire conference. Penn State's moving the ball so effectively throughout the midfield. They're not trying to penetrate up the center of the field, but instead they're really using the sides of the field. Northwestern has very good defense on the inside. One of the reasons why Penn State moves the ball so quickly is Laura Gebhardt's ability to hold her positioning. It may not look like she's doing a lot of work, but if you notice, she is very involved with the play, cutting back, creating space, and this is a player that opens up other parts of the field for her teammates. Gebhardt just runs out of room. Not a clean outlet for Northwestern. As soon as Katie Brenneman, number 14 in the backfield for Penn State, is coming up with the ball, she's very quick to outlet it. That is, I think, one of the harder issues that Penn State had against Maryland was finding an ability to outlet, but that has certainly improved for Penn State. As Kelly Stump was closed down. It's Northwestern playing for that top seed in the Big Ten tourney. In a regular season championship, Coach Fuchs was saying that they might be a, a little nervous playing for that 
number one seed. But the advantage for the Wildcats this year, and, and Tracy knows this conference well now, her sixth year in charge of this Wildcat program, saying this is the most balanced team that I've had. Someone has an off day in the past, well, the whole ship would go down. But that's not the case anymore because someone could just rise up and pick things up, and it's such a well-balanced attack. They don't rely on just that one dominant player. I think that also affords accountability. If you come in for the game for just a few minutes, you have to be able to produce and contribute. Denunzio looking to contribute. Just takes a deflection. Wide is Denunzio almost orchestrates there coming down the right side. Char Marek Curtis said that this is one of the players who is very much under the radar, and I think that is absolutely true. She has come out of her shell so much this season. Great speed on the outside, but not only that, her composure over the ball is very impressive. Her head is up, her eyes are up. She notices where to penetrate. 33 in blue and white. Kara's talking about Amanda Denunzio. She grew up here in State College, going to field hockey games, wanting to be a part of the program. And as you mentioned, the sophomore, Coach Charmarek Curtis says better things to come. Especially on this Nittany Lion team, nine seniors. There will be room for opportunities in the future due to graduation. This is also a Penn State team that this season has been ranked in the top five. And that says a lot about the caliber of this team. You can be sure that they want to be playing in College Park that weekend before Thanksgiving for the national championship. What a year it's been for the conference. Six of the nine Big Ten teams ranked. Sophia Miller. The little gallop forward here for Northwestern on the road. Nothing has been easy so far. And you can just see the stinginess there of Laura Gebhardt. I mean, it, it's, it's amazing how she communicates with her players offensively and defensively. When you apply a double team, there are two results that must happen. You must come up with a free hit or you must come up with a ball. If you're dedicating two players to one, you have to come up on the upper hand in that situation. Corner opportunity here, the first one for Northwestern with just over 20 minutes to go in this opening half. Northwestern certainly being resilient with getting inside the circle. They have a couple playmakers in the midfield and on the forward line that have an ability to draw corners. Isabel Flens is certainly one of those players. When you're looking at the corner offensive unit for Northwestern, Lisa McCarthy is going to be inserting the ball from the end line, but that's not where it stops. She has a great stick. She's going to be going to that near post, looking for a deflection. Coach says it starts with hitting the net off these penalty corners. And there it takes a deflection. The route was well intended by Dom Masters. Look at the way that Amanda Denunzio is flying to the ball. That is great technical work. Her stick is on the ground. It's pretty hard to sprint out at full speed while your stick is dragging on the turf. And Amanda Denunzio is certainly athletic enough to pull that off. Oh, the crafty Kelly Stump. They're one against three. And she's been the creator behind the ball here in the early moments of this opening half for Northwestern. We'll stay with Thompson and the Wildcats. Quickly quieted down by Penn State. Buttinger, the pack of Wildcats chasing her. It's good hold up ability by Buttinger. She has an end line. It's Gebhardt was available. Penn State was able to cover 50, 60 yards with just one pass. Good job outletting the ball and then just getting through the midfield between the 25s to be able to come up in their offensive end. So we saw Buttinger cover a lot of terrain recently for Penn State. See the ball hunger there. 
One by Kelly Stump. The most recent defensive work from Gebhardt. Absolutely. I mean, you talk about some of the individual skill that this player possesses, standing at only 5-2. That stick and that jab really comes out of nowhere if you're the opposing team. But when Gebhardt reads in for that, that, that jab tackle, she usually comes away with a good turnover. And that's why Sharmara Curtis loves her in the midfield. She's got just as much energy on both sides of the field. So you're looking to create danger in the circle. Tronsalidi was zooming in there. Look how quickly Penn State is outletting the ball or getting the ball out of their defensive end. It is not allowing Northwestern to set up their press. Kristen Wirtz, some solid defending coming in there. It's Corey Conley well anticipated out of the back. Just in the span of a couple games since their game against Maryland, Corey Conley, a freshman playing at that right back position, has improved tremendously. I mean, this is a player that possesses a lot of athleticism. We'll take a quick break here with under 17 minutes to go in the opening half. Penn State campus, nothing doing so far. Pure Silk performance of the match, Isabel Flens. Does it all, comes up with the turnover and whoo, top shelf, nice placement over the head of the goalkeeper. I mean, that just exhibited in one play just how skillful Isabel Flens is. She's in great shape too. I think that's one of the things that Tracy Fuchs really enjoys about Flens on this team. And just with an ability to go from mid to forward, that definitely exhibits very good fitness. She's got 10 goals on the year and she can score the brilliant variety as you saw. And a good reminder to young players, you want to score, shoot. So here's Northwestern, Stump. Could make entry into the circle. I don't think Northwestern has been doing a good job at all with getting inside the circle. They came up with one corner opportunity, but Penn State's defense is being very disciplined. And you know what, Dan? That was a focus they had this week after their loss against Iowa, was being disciplined on their defense. That is certainly showing in today's game. Yeah, they tried to keep Natalie Cafone to the outside in that 4 0 loss, but. Easier said than done. Here's Northwestern's. Bernardi dispossessed. Shar Martin finds some calmness in the backfield from McCarthy. McCarthy's pass is gobbled up, and it's Jenna Krismer, the senior, tied for second with nine goals this season. She wears number nine. Shot 6-2. Advantage Penn State, they've also hit a goal post. Good foot save from Maddie Carpenter. Still shut out hockey. Within the previous couple years, the way that these two teams have battled has been really exciting. Flashback to 2012, where this game went into overtime in State College, and Chelsea Armstrong, Northwestern's leading scorer in program history, came away with the game winner. I think that's really when these two teams started to create a little bit of a rivalry. Northwestern has started to come on since Tracy Fuchs has been at the helm in Evanston, and they battle. It's a physical game between these two. It's a 2 nothing win last year for Penn State in Pennsylvania. Denunzio and Griswack had the goals. The last Northwestern win here at State College way back in 2009. As so we look at the series history, and it's been favored by the Nittany Lions in three of the last four. As here's Penn State looking for the deflection in the circle, and they get it. Taylor Harold, her 17th of the season. 
If you have any sport that involves a stick, ball, or puck, whatever else in between, your hand-eye coordination must be on par. That is exactly what Terrell Harold exhibited in this play. Gets a little touch on it, and Laura Gebhardt noticed that as soon as she's, as soon as she's inside the 25, she's looking to get inside that circle. A great heads-up play by many members of that Penn State team. So now you look for a response from Northwestern. And they go to work immediately. Helping her in the penalty corner there. Bernardi going forward. Perhaps that goal will wake up Northwestern a little bit. They have to move the ball quicker. They have to play at a higher tempo and a higher speed. Looking to execute better in the attack circle, especially for potential rebound goals. Lisa McCarthy will bring it in. Go. Getting the drive off there, Isabel Flens. As Kylie Licata was ready. That camera position was a great view of where the battery, the stick stopper and the hitter, was what call is what is called a battery, was set up. They were set up in the center of the goal. So a little adjustment there. If you set up that much further along the edge of the circle, the center of the circle, the time that it takes to get up there from the inserter is longer. That you're putting the defensive corner unit in a better position to read the play, stop the play, and make a good play. I think this is where Northwestern needs to be a little bit more aggressive on the press. Penn State has had a lot of ability to possess the ball starting in the backfield. And if you've noticed throughout this game, a lot of it has been played inside the offensive 50 for Penn State. In order to come up with the ball in a better field positioning, Northwestern needs to up their press. So the cool hands, Elith, so McCarthy trapping that ball, but just as she does so, a turnover. There to Gebhardt, the wrong person. Little accidental bumping and contact there between Shar Martin and Gebhardt. Here's Isabel Flens and the Wildcats looking for the equalizer. Played into the circle. Lakata out there to knock down Kelly Stump, and it's cleared. Great read by Kylie Licata, choosing when to step up and become almost an additional defender further outside your goal line in the circle. That's a great stop. Talk about a physical game, perhaps one of the instances on the field where you will see a lot of collision is going to be inside the circle. I don't even know if number four Kelly Stump saw that coming. <laughs> Came out of nowhere. Kylie Licata, though, if you're going all ball, that's okay. And that's what Shar said is the key about the fifth year senior, Kylie Licata. She's got that aggressive gene in her. She always wants to go. She needs to find that balance, when to stay, when to go. Well, wise choice right there. She completely eliminates Kelly Stump. That probably gives coaches sometimes more gray hairs. Probably if their goalie is deciding when to go, when to not, when to stay. It's a nerve wracking position. Again, Northwestern's press is not allowing Penn State. It's Penn State, the deflection in front by Harold, saved by Maddie Carpenter. Dom Masters, number three for Northwestern, is certainly one of the orchestrators of the offensive press. And Amanda Denunzio, just look at her composure over the ball. Even after a couple jab tackles, she's able to stay with it. Great decision making by Maddie Carpenter. Perhaps one of the more harder things to do in the goalkeeper position is when you do a kick save. Your feet are actually open. It's not like you kick the ball straight on. You must open your feet and you open your hips. And when you do that, you have to be sure that you're deflecting the ball to a different part of the circle away from dangerous territory. 
meandering her way on the attack. It's Katie Brenneman. Green guard assessed to Northwestern's number one, Caroline Tronsolini. So Tronsolini assessed a green card for Northwestern. Penn State leads 1-0 off the 17th strike of the year from Taylor Harrell. Chopped wide. Again, looking for the possible deflection there, back post. Great job by Carly Selkos getting inside the circle and placing something on net. Notice how much time Penn State has with the ball when inside the circle. Maddie Carpenter is going to need some extra help from her defense. Northwestern must step up sooner outside the circle. And that was one thing that Michigan, I think, within this conference is very good at doing, is how high their defense can step up and step out. Penn State wanting more discipline defending after that 4 0 loss to Iowa. So far, we're seeing it. Northwestern also trying to execute up the field and penetrate up the field through the center. You look at some key players that Penn State has in the center Katie Andrews, Katie Bredeman, Laura Gebhardt. You look toward their outside back zone, I think they're, those are some more vulnerable parts of Penn State's team. Well, Taylor Harold has been the game breaker in this match so far with her goal earlier to propel Penn State to this 1-0 lead. And she also says goodbye. Coach Charmerette Curtis, 51st career goal, was tied ninth coming into this game with Coach. So now maybe she'll have a stronger argument when she disagrees with the advice that Coach <laughs> Curtis gives her, or I, I guess not. Bragging rights on the line, right? And speaking of the experienced coach, State Farm State of Success, Shar Moret Curtis, 28th year, fifth longest tenured coach in field hockey amongst active coaches. She's right on their tail, six overall. Has led her team to 29 NCAA appearances, has won six Big Ten tournament titles. She's been at the helm of this program and she's done great things with it. And I do know that the alumni with the program are still very involved. That is a close-knit community and a lot of respect for what Sharmarek Curtis has been able to do. And you look with the addition of Maryland this year to the conference, talking about Missy Mahar, those coaches are pretty much on level. They're on par with how long they've been involved with the game, what they've been able to do with their team. So great coaching within the Big Ten. Humble is a word I think of when thinking of Shar Moret Curtis as her Nittany Lions looking for a two goal cushion. Taylor Harold was venturing forward. Tronsolini, she's been dangerous, number one in white for Northwestern. Northwestern needs numbers. They have to get the ball moving. They need numbers once they go on the counter, once they go on the attack. She saw it there. Tronsolini was by her lonesome there on the outside. One against three, didn't really have many options. Look at the cool little turn from Gebhardt in the middle of the field. One thing that is instrumental with like a center back or center mid is how they can have limited touches with the ball, but find the open space, find the open field. And Laura Gebhardt, it may as well seem that she has eyes on the back of her head. <laughs> she knows where to move on the field and how to open it up. She's just so calm behind the ball. You can see her experience and technical ability. Nice little pass through feet to keep possession for Penn State. Streaking down the near side, the sophomore, Denunzio, cradles the line, but just ran into a few too many Wildcats. When Penn State receives the ball, notice how much time they have when they do it. 
they have an ability to set up. They have an ability to take the ball on the move. There is a lot of space that Northwestern is allowing when Penn State possesses. It's a great view at a double team, and that is textbook material. Denunzio out of the scrum, plays it into the circle. A turnaround shot there, Jenna Chrismer with the chance. And they'll get a closer look here with four minutes to go in the opening half. All about how this play started. When you go in for a double team, you create a V or an L. That is exactly what Taylor Harold and Amanda Denunzio did. They get inside the circle. Jenna Krismer, when she's inside, she's looking for any touch. One drill that you do to practice your shooting in in prepping up for a game, you just throw balls in there. They could be bouncing, they could come from behind you, in front of you, and you practice getting a touch on it. So you're used to being uncomfortable, unbalanced with your body, but placing a shot on net. So third penalty corner of the match, not a good one for Penn State. Just over three minutes to go here in the opening half. Showing some ball hunger there, the Wildcats. They play it to stump. Katie Brenneman has been dynamite. dynamite. What a rock in the backfield. She and Katie Andrews, roommates for four years, just a couple farm girls, coach says. Roommates for four years, same first name. I mean, these two have really enjoyed their time together at Penn State, 24 and 14. Sounds like the type of players you want amongst your group, just the type of players that have positive demeanors, always walk around with a positive upbeat and personality and smile that just kind of leaks onto the rest of the group. And also when you're recruiting, when, when players on your team are hosting recruits, that's, that does a lot, you know? If somebody has a good feeling walking around campus that you're trying to bring into your program, that goes a long way. That begs the question, your former coach at Michigan, Marsha Pancrest, did she? Have you take some tours or maybe not? <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I think it totally depends on the personality of a kid as to whether you're hosting. And if you go to some of these big Division I schools that are in the Big Ten, it's a great environment. You try to plan that around football weekends so you can really give players a taste of what being a college student athlete is all about. By the way, Marsha and I talked this morning, the... Uh, curfew during tournament time is in effect. Once a Wolverine, always a Wolverine, as we look forward to your commentary next week. The Big Ten Tournament, Ann Arbor, Michigan, beginning with semifinal coverage on Friday. Championship next Sunday. Who's it going to be? On some speed, here's Harold. Perimeter of the circle. Shot there coming from Denunzio. Maddie Carpenter again, forced to use her feet. Maddie Carpenter is keeping Northwestern in this game and limiting it to only one goal. Defense for Northwestern is a little bit on their heels. Again, notice how much time Amanda Denunzio had when she shot the ball. Great speed by Taylor Harrell. This is basically a 2v3 or 2v2. Maddie Carpenter very aware of where that right post is. What a great clear toward the outside. Eight shot advantage for Penn State, they lead 1-0 off the goal from Taylor Harold. And a good look from our crew moments ago. You saw the speed, Denunzio, how quickly she gets that shot off. Doesn't give Maddie Carpenter any time to really think, just react. Penn State applying the defensive pressure right outside the circle. Kicked away by Lakata. Keeping a careful watch here for the final 20 seconds. So time ticking away here in the opening half. So we get set for a penalty corner. Hot beverage time on this field hockey Friday for Char Moret Curtis. From the, the creamery nonetheless, right down the street on Penn State's campus. See, you spend a little time at State <laughs> College, University Park, Pennsylvania. <laughs> so 
So final lash of the half here for Lisa McCarthy and the Wildcats. Even though time is expired, the corner will continue to play and this will go out. Third penalty corner for the visitors here. They find the back of the net. No goal. You, heard, you did hear the buzzer go off before that ball did go in the back of the net. Laura Gebhardt right now is discussing with the official. Because the time was almost expired, that corner will, go, will continue to go out. But I did hear a buzzer before you heard the ball hit the back of the boards. And of course, the officials, as you see, do have IFBs and microphones. So they have an ability to communicate with each other. The official that was inside the circle was the one who originally ruled it a goal inside the circle. Well, let's listen to the evidence. pretty evident it was almost as if about a second elapsed after the buzzer went off when the goal went inside the net this is a huge momentum swing when you're going in toward halftime if the ball does come outside of the dash circle even when time is expired the play the corner is over the play would be done they would go into halftime that ball almost cleared that dash circle but it stayed inside play continued and that was a very distinct, loud buzzer. Well, Charmorette Curtis doesn't seem to be a happy coach with the way that half ended. And it's good to have the experienced head coach Charmorette Curtis on the headset with us live. And uh, Char, you looked a little confused and perplexed there late. What the heck happened? Well, you know, when he put time back on the clock and then they flood the corner, so we thought that the time ran out, so they shouldn't be given that shot. So he said that the corner had to play out. So, um, you know, I guess it's just the way it was. Uh, and it's, you know, it's a shame because I think we've been, pl we've been playing well. I mean, I think that uh, our, our first half was very well controlled game. So I'm just disappointed to give something up at that so late. Yeah, especially your defense, Shar. You know, talking with you earlier this week, disciplined defense has been a focus. How do you think that's played out in the first 35 minutes? Yeah, I thought we did some great stuff right around the uh, circle's edge you know, with them coming in. I mean, I, just, I think it's been a great hockey game, but I think that we just, we've just we had too many chances in front of the cage that we didn't finish on. It's more us not finishing right now. Great first half, Char. Thanks so much for the time and insight. All right, thank you very much. Back to work for Charmorette Curtis. The Nittany Lions and Wildcats, they try to figure things out here during halftime. Lots still to be settled. So it comes down to the second half, Penn State campus number five, hosting number eight. Not a thing settled yet. All level at one apiece. With Kara Lentz, I'm Dan Kelly. Should be a fun finish, final regular season game. Next week, the Big Ten tournament begins. He's wearing the white shirts, Northwestern Wildcats. They were down early, but score a late penalty corner goal that's completely changed this game trying to change things but just skidding out and getting a weak shot away there was Taylor Harold Taylor Harold had an ability to go 1v1 with Maddie Carpenter and I'm not sure if she was trying to slide and get a better placement on that ball, but if she had kept her body moving forward, get a little lift on it, and beat Maddie Carpenter in a foot race. Looking to penetrate the circle, Tronsaliti. Nice little move by Flens, but can't get by Sophia Miller. Isabel Flens is very effective in causing corners, and you'll notice she's playing at that center forward position. So a personnel change made by Tracy Fuchs at halftime, now deciding to put number 23 in white on that forward line. Penn State Field Hockey Complex. Typical fall day. 
temperature hovering around 50 degrees. The wind is pretty calm. Looking for space down that left side. Kelsey Thompson. Their hands on to Flens, but immediately swarmed by Nittany Lions. Great block tackle by Corey Conley. And notice how many Penn State defenders were on the attacker, about three, really trying to limit any type of movement Northwestern's going to be able to have inside that circle. It's very disciplined. So the experienced one, Katie Brenneman, and the freshman, Corey Conley, have been good for the Nittany Lions defensively. As Dom Masters couldn't hold possession. Notice a sense of urgency that Northwestern is coming out in the beginning of this second half. That one goal that they were able to net right as time expired has certainly done something in regards to the momentum here. It's Northwestern, six in one record. Looking for the top seed. The Big Ten tournament in the top spot in the regular season conference. Right now tied with Maryland. Can Kelsey Thompson out wide? Couldn't hold that line. And a reminder, BTN is home to the 2014 Field Hockey Championships. Semi-final coverage of the Big Ten Field Hockey Tournament live from Ann Arbor, Michigan. Next Friday, November 7th, looking to get the shot through was Char Martin in penalty corner on the way. Char Martin did a great job with using her body legally to shield the ball. Look how she keeps her left shoulder toward the defender, gets around, and as soon as that, an open look towards net, placing a shot because the ball was deflected off of a Penn State defender into dangerous territory. Northwestern's able to come up with a corner. The injector, Lisa McCarthy. Took him a little while. This is how they struck in the opening half. Backdoor deflection. There's Gebhardt. Disciplined corner defense coming from Penn State. Amanda Denunzio as the flyer had an ability to actually stay inside the play. That's important if you have a person that's rushing out. Notice how Denunzio breaks down her step and then commits to the ball after the pass. Sometimes that might be a decision coming from the left or right trail to have responsibility for those option passes to either side. Denunzio stayed in the play. She went directly to that pass to the left. That's very disciplined. Perhaps. The sniper, Isabel Flens, could have unleashed that shot just a little quicker. There was a slight hesitation. Char Martin off the restart. Looking to counter, it's Laura Gebhardt. Great play into space for Taylor Harold. She spreads that attack around, Harold. She really does a great job with cutting from either end of the field, from sideline to sideline, from end line to end line, traps it in space, gets her body facing forward. Hard tumble there, Sophia Miller, helped up by Taylor Harold. Not a lot of time for pain in a big match like this with the score tied one apiece. It's Emily Errett. Helps the Nittany Lions recapture. And earlier we look at that little clash. Yeah, Taylor Harold, if you have your arm up like that and a little bit extended and you make contact with somebody who has possession of the ball in front of you, it's going to be a hard a hard foul and a green card given to Taylor Harold. See Northwestern's defense also applying pressure at an earlier point on the field and in this situation, and not just one person. They're starting to apply that double team. It's important that they come up with turnovers deep in Penn State's defense or mid. 
Gebhardt venturing forward there with Jenna Chrismer. Pouncing on the turnover finally is Katie Andrews, but possession. Quickly brought back by Sophia Miller. She's been good today, number 24 for Northwestern. Great job by Dom Masters, too. We were speaking about this not too long ago, a long ago, Dan, when you received the ball, you cut into different space and you cut on an angle. Tougher to decipher when you attack with that swerve is here the defensive stance from the Wildcats. Lisa McCarthy begins the breakout. But Usually if Lisa McCarthy is stepping up for the ball for a block tackle, she will come up with the ball in that situation. She's a very smart player playing in the backfield, and those decisions to step up, inter intercept, and tackle are the exact traits you want in your backfield. Things getting a little rugged. Shar Martin and Gephardt with the clash, but it's been a nice, clean match with crisp, precise passing most of this game. Tronsolini on the turnover. Looking for Kelly Stump, who was helped down. Kelly Stump should have had herself in a better diagonal back pass for Caroline Tronsolini to be able to find her. Kicked away by Kylie Licata. Jenna Chrismer. Runs into the coverage there of Shar Martin. Well, tomorrow the Wildcats head to Iowa City to battle the Hawkeyes. Then Michigan welcomes the Hoosiers to the big house. Big Ten football Saturday, tomorrow at noon Eastern on BTN and BTN to go. Denunzio, a reverse chip. Nice idea, just sails wide of the target. Great idea by Denunzio. Also recognizing how the defense has collapsed on the inside of the circle. Look at this. She sees that two defenders are to the right of her, so where is the open space that she can find? To the left. Speaking of being dodgy and meandering on the attack, Denunzio is always doing it. Number 33 for Penn State, who's wearing the Blue shirts this afternoon on their home field. Buttinger, the Canadian, number 19, keeps it on the turf there for Taylor Harold. Starting to hear the urgent chatter from the fans and the sidelines, the coaches and players. Penn State had the opening goal from Taylor Harold, but a goal from Tronsolini late in the opening half. We stay 1-1. So many different players on this Penn State team do have the green light to become on the attack. Corey Conley playing the right back position all the way on the end line. If you have players that have an ability to step up like that and players around them that can cover for them, it makes you very effective on the offense. 28th year boss, Shar Moret Curtis watching on. It's Katie Brenneman. Katie Brenneman very heads up. As soon as she's coming up with the call, she's moving with it quickly. So quick, actually, that she's finding the opposing team and players around her not able to respond quickly. This is not a player that turns the ball over when she has it on her stick. See all the room for Emily Arrett. Look at those cuts coming from Taylor Harrell from the center of the circle all the way out to the sideline. They are very effective. They're timed well. And also her teammates understand that if they lay it into space, that they're going to be able to connect with number eight on the forward line. Buttinger loses it. Almost having it back in the midfield was Gebhardt, but it's Isabel Flynn shoving it cross field. Penn State's defense is behind the ball. They have a lot of numbers behind the ball, and they are winning the 1v1 battle today. You see somebody breaks through there, but then there's that secondary support, that wave of defense there to fill the gaps. 
Absolutely, and you can be sure that some of those players in the backfield, such as Katie Brenneman, Katie Andrews, the communication that they have with the players on front of them is on par. So you recognize your senses are so keen, especially your hearing when you're playing team defense. Good job by stepping up, and if you leave the ball a little bit of space off your stick, Penn State's usually gonna come up with it in this situation. You wanna channel the attack into a double team as well. Spot on. Bernardi plays into the circle, but quickly quieted down by the Nittany Lions. Katie Brenneman back there. The amount of time that the defense for Penn State possesses the ball is not that long, limiting the chance for Northwestern to come in and take the ball away. Look at this, the double team applied. You want to quarter them into the end line, the sideline, and when you see a hungry team of defense coming straight at you, that's scary for an attacker. Because again there, they break the initial press, get by, but the second defender ready there to pounce and the swervy movements there of Taylor Harrow looked like she was going to break down some defenders. She can't, but now it's Gebhardt. Getting a piece of it there was Tronsaliti. This is probably some of the best field hockey I've seen Penn State play all weekend. This is also the type of hockey they want to be playing when they're looking ahead to the Big Ten tournament. This senior class, this team, they have two Big Ten tournament championships, two Big Ten conference championships, and certainly they have their eye in the national championship. This is a team that is really fighting to get to College Park. Remember that loss 4-0 to Iowa for Penn State. That was the first time they've been shut out since a 2-0 loss to Ohio State since way back in October of 2011. So that's the type of loss that will get your attention, and maybe it was good timing for these Nittany Lions. A reset button, a clean slate. You have to go back to the drawing board, and as we spoke about at the top of this broadcast, how there was a team meeting called by the captains, and when asked Sharp or Rhett Curtis, you know, what was transpired in it, that's something that you keep inside your team, but if you come out to practice fiery, motivated, you have a good few days of practice, that's a great feeling if you can perform come Friday. A few spirited training sessions. Conditioning, there's probably some conditioning in there too. <laughs> some voices raised. Some fatigued legs afterwards. As here we're starting to get to that crucial time, the final 20 minutes of regulation. And Iowa is a team that once they have momentum and push with it, they are very effective. They got on the board early in that game, going into halftime with a 3 nothing lead, a large deficit. Some of the goals from that game are some of the prettiest goals that I've seen all year. Two of those goals scored off the corners for Iowa. And that's a team that's really dangerous come tournament time. And for good reason, you questioned, would they be able to sustain that pace, Iowa, because they changed coaches on the fly during preseason. It's been a mentally fatiguing season, but... Mentally fatiguing, physically fatiguing, and they do not have a very deep bench. So with the energy level that Iowa plays at, that was a huge question going into the remainder of the season. And the last time that the Big Ten tournament was held in Ann Arbor, Iowa won it. Maybe it's Coach... Lisa Salucci's and the Hawkeyes turn once again. This is Northwestern. Looking for number one seeding in the Big Ten tournament. Six and one record. As Penn State has cooled a little bit here late in the season with a four and three conference record. They would like to position themselves better for the tournament. Cooley knocked down and they find their source of offense, Kelly Stump, but quickly cleaned up by Laura Gebhardt of the Nittany Lions. Even when Katie Brenneman is on the turf, she's still able to maintain control of the ball and outlet it effectively. One of the reasons this defense ranked 13th nationally, Penn State, the play of Katie Brenneman and company. Great step up by Sophia Wright coming up with a good interception. I think Northwestern wants to gain a little bit more momentum or numbers around the ball when they do come up with those plays. You really have to push with speed against that Penn State defense. Great pass by Buttinger. 
She kind of had an off game versus Iowa, number 19 in blue, looking to bounce back this afternoon, looking to pick up the pieces there was Taylor Harold in the circle. And that's something that Sharmarek Curtis would like to see out of Budinger is consistency. You, know, you can have ups and downs in the season, but if you're one of the seniors on the team that can contribute, you have to be able to do it consistently. She just has high, high expectations for Buttinger. Since she's got speed and she's a big, strong girl, can bring a lot to the field as Gebhardt wincing in pain as she gets up from that skirmish. I think it says a lot about the character of both of these teams. Look at the interaction that Lisa McCarthy had with Laura Gebhardt after that collision. It's respectful. Hey, we're going to play hard. You're going to go down for a block tackle. I might doze you over, but I'll help you back up. <laughs> Especially this time of the year, the more experienced upperclassmen, they know the enemy well. And I think, as I stated earlier, that the rivalry that these two teams had uh, over the previous probably two or three years has been really fun to watch. And even the way that Northwestern has come along in conference has been really fun to watch. Yeah, it's been a series dominated by Penn State. They've won four of the last five, but nothing settled yet. I'll level at one. Little Halloween field hockey on BTN and open up the festivities. Taylor, Harold, and Penn State. Laura Gephardt did a great job with just getting that shot inside the circle to go up one goal. With time expired, Northwestern went into the half being able to equalize this game. Caroline Tronsolidi finds the back of the boards and we're all tied up with just a little over 17 minutes to go in this game. I would give the advantage to Penn State in the first half. I don't know if you could say the same here in the second. Would you agree? I feel like it's a little more even here in the second half. Northwestern has had more opportunities in the midfield and inside the offensive end. But as Shor Sharmarek Curtis stated before going into the half, she says, we just need to finish. This, this could actually be, be a three to one game if Penn State was able to execute some of their plays inside the circle. Yeah, the chances have certainly favored the home team. Just one shot between these two teams this half, and that was off a of Penn State stick. Wow, look at the way Laura Gebhardt was able to come into that play, pickpocket Kelsey Thompson, and create some offense. That can create some energy, watching the determination there and the precision from Laura Gebhardt. When you see a center midfielder be able to move all over the field and can contribute, she reads the play so well. She goes in for the double team. I don't even think Kelsey Thompson knew where Laura Gephardt was coming from. Not only that, but continued to move forward. So once you come up with the ball after getting a turnover, you are really separating yourself and not allowing that player to get in the play. And that's an experience, Kelsey Thompson, that got Surprised there by the double teaming, and of course, picking up the ball there was Laura Gebhardt with her anticipation. The seniors on this team has, have seen something happen with this Northwestern program that is really special, and they've helped create that. Wildcats on the attack. Isabel Flens. Jabbed off her stick by Katie Andrews. Sloppy turnover by Flens. I mean, if you're going to decide to use a very deceptive reverse pass, you must make sure that that is connecting with somebody. Penn State able to tackle, able to defend. Look how far they are outside the circle, creating pressure onside the play. That is great team defense. It was Kelsey Thompson who was victimized by a turnover, creating one there moments ago, number 11 in white for Northwestern. And also some of the players that Penn State has in the middle of the field, Katie Bredeman, Katie Andrews, Laura Gebhardt, they have an ability to move from sideline to sideline as well. I mean, they're extremely mobile and versatile in their positions. Shots 11-5 favoring Penn State, but the score remains 1-1. It's been the same since the dying seconds of the opening half, trying to change that, Gebhardt and Penn State. 
Gebhardt unable to move around the congestion. Good field positioning now for Northwestern being inside the offensive 25. A long missed pass going all the way down the field. Northwestern needs to push up in pressure when the ball was back for that 16-yard hit. Nice job by Brenneman to keep the possession alive. Denunzio stripped there by Tronsoliti. I think you can definitely see why Caroline Tronsoliti was a hockey player, <laughs> the way that she was able to come in and make a good defensive play. Those are always your favorites, the ex-ice hockey players. What is it about ice hockey that carries over to field hockey? Well, first of all, it's just the stick skills. And also, I, the players are very coordinated. I mean, if you have to coordinate stick, body, ground, the thing, same thing transpires from hockey. So you have great recognition of how your upper body moves compared to your lower body. And you're playing on a fast surface. And they're a little more physical than some of the other athletes. So just over 13 minutes to go in the second half. Penn State campus. Here comes Northwestern looking for their first lead of the game. Double team, great double team, almost a triple team, also by Penn State's defense. Dom Masters found the right outlet in Tronsoliti, but couldn't get through. Showing some hunger right back on the ball, Tronsoliti. Navigates it into the circle, kicked away by Lakata as Bernardi had the chance. Great job by Kylie Licata inside the net with keeping her team defense organized and also helping him out with a big save. Wow, what a stand-up play by number two in net. Caroline Tronsolini trying to find the inside. Licata makes a great save and gets it away from danger. If that ball was deflected toward the center of the circle, that'd be a lot of trouble. Trying to create some trouble at the other end. Jenna Krismer, she loses it. So we saw Kylie Licata at one end, now trying to test Maddie Carpenter. Off the foot, penalty corner here with 12 minutes to go in regulation. Well, in all honesty, I felt as though that should have been a free hit for the defense coming out of the circle. Taylor Harold came in hard with that tackle and also went down to the turf. That was quite an aggressive stick hack. And you saw Lisa McCarthy speaking with the official immediately when that corner was called. Get a little bit of a championship feeling right now. 1-1, one, one, 11 minutes left, have a corner, you're at home. Here we go. The injector error at Gebhardt. Is she going to give it a hit? She does. Just redirected wide off the stick of Denunzio. Looking for the deflection of Denunzio in the center of the circle. What disallowed that? Char Martin, number 12. Look at the defense Char Martin has. She gets her body down. It's a little bit like basketball sometimes, too. You box out. The flyer, Tronsoliti, also forcing the issue. Katie Andrews. Great use of spreading the field out. Corey Conley, as a freshman, has a very good sense of where she should be positioned along that right side. Turnovers, though, they can kill you. Kelsey Thompson going forward, but quickly loses it. Kelsey Thompson with really no options around. Well, tonight on BTN, Illinois takes on Michigan State in women's volleyball. Coverage starts at 7 Eastern tonight, presented by Tachi Carr on BTN and BTN to go. Mike Wolf and Andre Flaw on the call for that big match. So we keep the Halloween party going all afternoon on BTN. Starts with a little field hockey Friday. Maybe we're going to play a little extra hockey this afternoon. Miller finds Isabel Flens perched along the near sideline. Flens makes a run by the first defender, but not the second. Quieted down by Emily Eric. Penn State very versed in overtime this season. Two of their three losses, excuse me, three of their four losses have been decided in overtime. 
Risky plays by Buttinger moving up the field, but her technical ability allows Penn State to maintain possession under 10 minutes to go. Gebhardt, she is open outside the circle there as they try to move it in, though, to Jenna Krismer. She's been cut. She doesn't realize it there on her left arm. And the officiating crew hasn't noticed it either. As they play on. Selkos makes the turn. The always cagey Jenna Krismer on the outside. Good step up by Kelsey Grandwall coming out of that left back position. Northwestern's defense applying that pressure a lot sooner on the outside. You notice how Penn State is having some difficulty with creating a play or circumstance to get inside that circle. Isabel Flens now back at that right midfield position as well. Dom Masters pass intercepted by Andrews, but they stay right on her. It's Andrews and Tronsolidi a duel that leads them both going to ground. Cooley trapped and knocked down by Shar Martin. Unable to make the connection there with Dom Masters. She's the power player, number three in white, Dominique Masters. She can strike the ball hard, not just pure finesse. She leads Northwestern with 11 goals on the season. And also one of the main orchestrators for the offensive press. And it's important to have somebody on that forward line that is knowledgeable, good game sense, good communication, and good speed. Because if you come up with the ball deep in enemy territory, you can really take it to the net. Especially this time in the match, those heavy legs start to wear on you. See the urgency now behind the ball. Jenna Christmer. The Nittany Lions and the Wildcats from Northwestern all level at one here. Great work by Amanda Denunzio to stay on that forward press, applying the pressure. And it's important that as the forwards go, your midfielders must step in line and follow up. The pressure from Denunzio started this little rush forward for Penn State. We'll look see how, if they can do anything with it. Look how quickly Laura Gebhardt takes that free hit. Gebhardt the drive off the keeper. It's in Penn State and Gebhardt and the Knicks. Lions lead 2-1. One skill that Lauren Gebhardt allows and displays is how quickly she take, takes free hit in this particular circumstance. She recognizes how quickly this play can happen, so come up with a free hit here. Don't argue with the ref. Don't look around for anything else. She takes it upon herself. You know what? Hey. I'm going, and I'm going straight inside the circle. No pressure whatsoever coming from the defense. Has a wide open net. If a member of the national team and captain of your team, a senior, is inside the circle with an open look, you must come up with the goal. What a great display by Laura Gephardt. I think this is certainly one of the premier players in the country and also probably a high contender for player of the year. And that free hit and that possession was maintained as you touched upon earlier, before that goal was scored, well before Amanda Denunzio doing the little things for the Nittany Lions. The beautiful finish, the powerful finish from Laura Gebhardt, and it's advantage for the home team as they try to capture the title and get the number one seed for the Big Ten tournament. Northwestern Wildcats, that is, but they're down here on the road, and this is a Northwestern team that has won four of their last five conference road games. That is in jeopardy this afternoon. And it's amazing what an early win against Maryland has done for Northwestern as their season has gone on. 
even knowing some of the coaching staff and players before the season started, they had a lot of high hopes and a lot of promise for the way this season was going to go. And if you can start your conference play by knocking off one of the top two teams in the country, that set them up very nicely to go through the conference. So Tracy Fuchs and the Northwestern Wildcats trying to improve to seven and one, but they're down two one. What's the message from their perspective here? Dire Straits now on the road. Well, I think you have to have a very, very short memory. I mean, this is a team that really wants to fight for that Big Ten tournament. When Northwestern enters the tournament, no matter their last game of the season, they got knocked out by Indiana in 2012 decisively. They got knocked out last year by Ohio State in the first round after beating them the last weekend of the game of the season. So they have a lot to prove this year when it comes to the conference tournament. And Amanda Denunzio doing her part on that forward line. And what was most important about that play was the fact that Natalie Budinger was able to support it. It's one thing if your forwards are doing the work. It's another thing if your teammates are stepping up and supporting you. It's been a nice bounce back performance by the Nittany Lions and Natalie Buttinger. Still work to be done under four to go in regulation. Looking a little disjointed and disconnected right now the Wildcats. Fourteen goals over their last four games for Northwestern but only one this afternoon. It's an incredible job by Penn State to shut down the Flens, the Masters, the Tronsolides. Now is their time, though, as Northwestern looks for the equalizer. Katie Andrews breaking things up. Buttinger just trying to keep possession and play it to the corners. Sophia Miller on for Shar Martin. Out of range for Kelsey Thompson. Northwestern also seems very comfortable and poised at this point in the game. I think that says a lot about the maturity of some of the players on the team. Certainly you want that urgency, you want that energy, but you want to do that in a very smart way. This team a couple years ago would panic. I don't see that with them now. Northwestern. They've learned some tough lessons over the last couple of seasons. Tracy Fuchs in the Northwestern Wildcats call a timeout. So just over two minutes to go in regulation and some good honors recently. A lot of Big Ten representation in the senior game. It's always a very special event. I had the privilege of playing in the senior game in 2006 at Wake Forest. I got to play with my roommate from college and it's a lot of fun. It's also a little strange at times when you're seeing opponents on the same team and has a great energy to it, a great vibe. There's always a wonderful turnout for the NCAA championships, which this year is being held at Maryland, which always draws a great field hockey crowd. So congratulations to the seniors. Tip of the cap to Laura Gebhardt, Maddie Carpenter, the goalkeeper. It's a lot of big games upcoming. Senior game, the rest of regulation here, the Big Ten tournament next week. Beginning on our airwaves, the semifinals next Friday. Of course, quarterfinals, you can catch them on BTN Plus. What a busy day that's going to be. Just a marathon of field hockey. A lot of field hockey happening on Thursday. And of course, the winner of this conference tournament does get an automatic bid for the NCAAs. As we saw with the conference standings to open up this game, six Big Ten teams are ranked in that. And I could see this year a possibility of four Big Ten teams making that NCAA tournament. So there is a lot to look forward to come November. <laughs> Great shots there from our crew. Gebhardt just locked in on the field. Tracy Fuchs.
dancing around, and it's not because of the weather. It's nervous moments now with her team down on the road looking for the equalizer. Laura Gebhardt has a lot of respect for Tracy Fuchs, as does Tracy for Laura Gebhardt. Tracy was one of the coaches for the U21 team that played in the World Cup a couple of years ago. And after the, they came home from the tournament, Laura Gebhardt wrote a handwritten note to Tracy, thanking her for her coaching her overseas. So it says a lot about a player coaching relationship that Laura Gebhardt is able to have with coaches across the conference and in the nation. That's the voice of Kara Lentz. Back in the day, she was coached by Tracy Fuchs, then an assistant with Marsha Pankratz, the University of Michigan, but now in her sixth season, leading Northwestern. They always engage. Charmorette Curtis there, perched along the sideline, keeping a watchful eye, hoping her team can wrap things up here this afternoon, leading 2-1. Krismer plays a game of keep away. She's got some help. You'll notice Lena Phillips in a red jersey in the backfield. That's because Northwestern has pulled their goalie out of net. Northwestern playing with 12 field players right now. So going for broke, 50 seconds. First things first, they just need to get possession back. Wonderful job here by Krismer and company. So maybe one final chance for the tying goal. Or maybe not. Even with numbers around the ball, Northwestern can't outlet the ball out of their backfield. Penn State showing a great amount of maturity and experience at this point in the game. They look for a loud response after being shut out by Iowa 4-0. They've got the loud response this afternoon, a quality 2-1 win for Penn State to wrap up the regular season. display of field hockey today and what a way for Penn State to rebound from last weekend and come away with a one goal win. You saw pretty hockey, you saw physical hockey, you saw great hockey today in the conference. Not a lot of difference between both teams except one goal. Gebhardt, the game winner, a dejected Northwestern side looks on. Warming up at the right time, Laura Gebhardt now seven goals in her last seven games. None bigger than the game winner this afternoon to help propel her Nittany Lions to the 2-1 victory over Northwestern.